Good day chaps. So today's video will look at the first part of two vehicles that share the same name but are not actually that closely related. They're the contentious tanks or to use the correct naming the FV4401 contentious and project contentious covering both contentious 1 and 2. Both of these vehicles were innovative ideas tied to separate projects designed to break away from the stereotypical builds of their day and try to overcome problems facing tank design. While not successful in achieving their goals, they remained interesting vehicles and today two test beds survive along with some limited data. So where did the vehicles originate from? Well for this we have to go back to 1953 to the first project, the FV4401. This was a tumultuous era in tank design. The Second World War had only been over for just seven years, and the next 15 years would see more innovation and new ideas in tank design than the decades before or after. Tanks during World War II, while gaining size and overall capability, remained fundamentally the same. Very few new things were implemented between 1938 and 1945. Features like radios, stabilised and advanced optics had in fact in many cases been around before the war. Only during the war did they become more commonly equipped and thus assumed by many to be new features and no longer just particular to limited experimental tanks, themselves often unknown to the regular soldiers. And while it's doubtless the quality and use of such equipment became more prevalent, the core basics remained, for the most part, the same. However, once the war was over, the idea of tanks, both in design, production and implementation, rapidly changed, and the machines themselves advanced at an unprecedented level in both sophistication, size and unfortunately cost. Some of this was down to good old fear-mongering, with Russia being the new enemy of the West, a fair amount of mirroring took place. The Soviets produced A, so you attempted to count it with a bigger or more lethal B. This was, in hindsight, foolish, and often overlooked far more superior projects on the sidelines, yet at the same time took the larger slice of the financial pie when tank budgets were in discussion. As a result of this desire to outdo the Russians, in particular the ISC family, large heavy tanks grew in favour for a while. In the UK, FV214 would emerge and become Conqueror with its colossal 120mm gun. While in the US, similar gigantism evolved with the M103 tanks, lumbering, heavily armoured and armed behemoths that chewed up resources yet provided little appreciable return. This also led to the next problem, that at the time, with the materials and technology available, this growth could only go so far before the end result defeated its own purpose. What was needed was ideas. It was realised by men like Dr Harvey, him of Chobham fame, that if tanks continued to grow in this manner, they would be unusable on the battlefield. The next generation would need an even more powerful gun, but this required a gun so long that manoeuvring or even going down inclines was impossible, and the ammunition required would be difficult to load or handle. In turn, to stop the next enemy gun, the armour would need to be so thick that the weight would exceed any method to reliably transport the vehicles in any number. This then led to a choice of either a smaller internal volume, which would severely limit the crew's ability to fight, or an increase in size to a point where the vehicle was both strategically and tactically unmovable, particularly as the tanks at the time had outgrown the engine growth sector, and the added size not only drastically increased the reliability issues, but made the vehicle's profile grow to the point that it would be hard to miss, thus needing more armour, and therefore a vicious circle continued. As a result of this, a branch of the FVRDE, or Fighting Vehicles Research and Development Establishment, set about on a new project to design a vehicle that would have more firepower, protection and speed than those preceding it, and yet keeping with the more important aspects in tank design, be lighter, have better volume ratios, and be significantly cheaper to produce. And it was here that the ideas somewhat outpaced technology. 
Dr. Harvey began to outline a new project at the FVRDE called the FV4401 Contentious. This was a somewhat radical idea of reducing the crew to one man, on the belief that while mass morale was a known issue, it was felt that plenty of aircraft and even naval vessels managed, and therefore he reasoned, so could tanks. This new vehicle would have heavy armour, but a reduced overall volume due to the crew reduction. Meanwhile, a lot of other features would be automated and require less effort. And as grisly as it sounds, should a vehicle be lost in action, it was the loss of one man, not four or five. And the squishy parts are always the hardest bits to place in any vehicle. The overall machine would use the FV400 components to form the basic parts and would thus be 4.2 meters long, 5.4 meters from gun tip to stern, 1.9 meters tall and weigh only 15 tons. The commander, who was also the driver, gunner and radio man, was situated to the mid-centre of the vehicle, with a single hatch above his head. This also included all of his sighting arrangements to his left, and to his right was a number 42 radio and batteries, while to his front, a crossbar steering system from the FV400 could control both the steering and the gunnery aspects. To his top left and right were single-cell air cleaners, which would draw in air and were kept in sealed compartments, and above the crewman, Mounted in a single hatch was the gunner sight from a Centurion with two 4.5 inch standard vision blocks to either side. This was also deemed somewhat problematic as when the cupola rotated the driver remained stationary forcing him into a situation where he had to twist his body 20 degrees to either direction when looking for new targets. And a special reposcope was fitted to the rear of the vehicle for rear driving for obvious reasons, but it was expected when not in combat the crewman would be in the up position. The original weapons chosen to be studied in this project were four times recoilless guns, with one round each, for a total of four shots before a reload was needed. This was deemed extremely impractical, and so two guns were dropped, and in place it was to feature either exterior 120mm recoilless guns with revolver style magazines with seven rounds each or 18 5-inch rockets, or alternatively, three guided missiles. All of the weapons were to be externally mounted, as mentioned, to keep the internal hull dimensions as low as possible. However, only the gun option was considered in any real depth. These twin guns were fixed on a stub axle type mounting, which in turn was supported by raised pillars of a shallow cupola mounted partially over the engine and partially over the driver's compartment, with a hatch located between the pair, and being fixed to the driver's view system were limited to 20 degrees either side in traverse and plus 10 elevation and minus 7 degrees of gun depression. The traverse, due to its limited scope, was hand-powered only, and as the vehicle was not designed to fire on the move, there was no gun stabilisation, although both guns were mounted at their exact centre of gravity to assist somewhat. Each gun also had a .50 spotting machine gun with 200 rounds attached to assist with range finding and in an emergency be used for close defence. For power the contentious used the same engine as the FV400, in this case a Rolls-Royce B81 Type 8 cylinder engine delivering 200 brake horsepower for a top speed of 23 miles an hour, located to the middle left of the tank. This was coupled to a Howard Hobbs TN21 gearbox to its right hand side with engine power taken via a transfer drive to the input shaft connected by a conventional shaft to the rear of the vehicle. Behind the engine was the rear radiator which was about 4.5 foot square and behind the gearbox was a fuel tank with a rather limited 45 gallons of fuel. Suspension consisted of eight torsion bars acting through trailing axle arms to four rubber tyred twin road wheels either side and the tracks were to be a manganese type 18 inch track. The last part is the protection. In order to reach the same protection or greater than the FV214 the contentious needed at least six inches of armour. This was achieved by using a front plate in a pike nose three piece configuration with 5.5 inches angled back at 57 degrees 
and with third compound angle at 30 degrees, giving it 296 millimeters of effective frontal armor. The nose was just three inches at 52 degrees for 4.8 inches, well, 123 millimeters, while the sides were at best 25 millimeters and 14 to the rear and the top and bottom being 14 and 12 respectfully. Despite the good intentions of the design team to find a solution to the tank stalemate, the FV4401 contentious was sensibly dropped. The idea of a one-man crew was not deemed feasible, and the external weapons would be too prone to damage, both conventional and nuclear. Coupled with the overall low ammunition count, and the fact that the recoilless rifles are inherently accurate past 1,000 metres, let the idea be shelved, with only a wooden model made. A few years later, after the one-man tank destroyer was cancelled, a few more vehicles arrived. However, these vehicles, Contentious 1 and Contentious 2, were tied into Project Prodigal. And it's also worth noting, neither were given the FV number, FV4401, so commonly touted. It's not sure where this started, though one has his suspicions. However, a memo from the Treasury dated 1958 has the only use of the word FV4400 and Prodigal, which is most likely crossed wires as the later vehicles were not tied to the FV400 chassis and were to be used in different ways. And in all the later documentation, the word FV4401 does not crop up in relation to the next vehicles. Well guys, that's all for today. I'd like to give a huge thank out to LSAL for my Discord channel for help with these models as there are very limited pictures to start with. I'm always on the lookout for more people to help or build some of the many plans we have into models. And if you feel you might want to have a stab at that, and you have the tools to do it, hop over onto our Discord. I'll cover the later vehicles, Contentious 1 and 2, soon. Promise. And both these vehicles actually survive at Bovington as well. But with that said, until next time, toodle pip.